Sometimes I get up at four in the morning and write for a couple of hours and then go back to bed and then get up a little bit later on. I always start the day though by coming in here at about nine o'clock. This is where I work uh, with four books a year which are translated into 42 languages and published all over the world. Obviously it's quite a business and I have people who help me with that, Jan and Leslie. Good morning. Good morning. Jan, what have we got coming up? Got busy time coming up, Sandy. You're going to Florida on Saturday and you're there till the end of the month. And then in February you're off to Paris and then some UK events at the beginning of March. So you've got a really busy time. So I have to do a lot of travelling. I go to the United States for tours three times a year, usually. Anyway, we, we get a lot of letters um, every day. Uh, an average week we might get, say, 50 letters, 40, 50 letters. Uh, we respond to all of them. Leslie looks after that. Um, what have we got today, Leslie? One here from Sweden. Oh, yes. A very nice one, which I think you'll enjoy. I did a tour of Scandinavia last year, including Sweden. Uh, the books seem to go down well in, in Sweden. The Swedes like Mara Matsuri for some reason, so we hear quite a lot from them. Now watch this. This is what he does. This is, um, this is Augustus Basil, who's another of my assistants, and uh, he's very helpful, as you can see. He takes a close interest in my affairs. <laughs> This is one addressed to Mr. Alexander McCall Smith, author near Morningside. Good old post office. Well, it's reached me, which is the important thing. This is the room where I keep my books, uh, and I also keep various things that I've picked up in different parts of the world. Uh, this, for example, is an African sculpture of two mythical creatures, which I think is rather nice. I've always been rather fond of that. Uh, this chap over here is Hamish McCunn, the Scottish romantic composer who composed Land of the Mountain and the Flood. Uh, and then uh, that pencil uh, drawing of a lion in a kilt uh, is a great favourite of mine. That's by Ian McIntosh, who's a friend of mine and the illustrator of my 44 Scotland Street books. And next to it is an embroidery of a crocodile, which comes from the cover of the number one ladies' detective agency. That was done by a reader who very kindly sent it to me. Very kind gesture. And that over there is a serpent. I love wind instruments. I've got virtually every sort of wind instrument in this house. And uh, that is uh, one which I, I think is a, a marvellous, um, I suppose, jeu d'esprit. So this is where we deal with correspondence and all that sort of thing, but when I actually want to write, then I go next door. When I'm writing a book, I, I write about three to 4,000 words a day. Um, I sit here, I don't really have to think what's going to happen in the book. I don't have to ask myself what, what's going to happen next, who's going to say what. It just seems to come from the subconscious mind. So I write for two or three hours and then come out of that trance, in a sense, at the end of that. I've got uh, a number of notebooks um, that I take with me all over the place and I write down ideas for the various novels that I'm working on, snatches of dialogue, uh, descriptions, things that people say, and so on. Sometimes I, I write two books at the same time, particularly my serial novel, Scotland Street, which runs in the newspaper. That tends to be written at the same time as I'm writing one of my other novels. So that's how I work. And there, over there, on those shelves, we see the end results, the novels in all their different languages uh, throughout the world. That's the, the, uh, the end of it all.